Aloha and welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe'e, where I have a chance to present the views, points of uh, my friends all over town. Normally, you know, we may be the kind of disagreeable friends that make for a good show, but I thought that you would really enjoy a good human interest story about people who are trying to do good things in the community. So. This afternoon, we have as our guest, Kara Kusonoski, who is the, did I do that right? Kara? Oh, almost, almost. It's Kusunoki. Kusunoki. Mm -hmm. Kara is the executive director mm -hmm. of Read to Me International, as, as you can tell. Read to Me International. She actually came prepared to make sure that none of you forget this uh, nonprofit that. Uh, that's helping our community. So, Kara, first of all, um, tell us what Read to Me is all about. I mean, sure. what is its mission? How, how does it function? Yeah, thanks so much for having me on the show, John. Really appreciate it. Um, just so you know, and I think you're well familiar with Read to Me International. Um, it might sound familiar because for over 20 plus years, since the 90s, um, your wife, Lin Waihe, had a vision of improving literacy. So that's what she was doing exactly, all those hours and nights. That's exactly what so she's been toiling about for years wow. now. I'm really Surprise. glad you told me, just in case I get quizzed right, by her. Right, right, so exactly. What is it that she's been doing right. and you have been executive directoring for Ah, uh, yes. So I've been directoring um, the mission, which is to share the love and joy of reading aloud. And that's really important to us because we believe that starting children at an early age with that love and joy of reading really equips them with their future academic journey and, and their lives. It really improves their life outcomes. So you, your, your mission is to get parents, I guess, or adults, right. actually. Right. We want to invest our adults in Hawaii to believe that they can indeed invest their own children in reading and writing. Um, and so they enjoy that process as they grow older. So, what, what it, it, so the, the idea is like reading to children. Okay, and, and how old do the children have to be before you get to read to them? We, I mean, we think that even when a child is in the womb of a mother, that right. it's important for the child to hear those words, to develop that fluency um, at an early age. So anywhere from pre-birth, so even as adults, we all like to be read to, I think, you know. That what about music, hearing music? Exactly, and, and, music and, is a part of it. Music are words strung together. And so we really do believe in the power of music and fun, right? We want to infuse fun always in the readings. Um, so in our programs, you'll see a lot of interaction, a lot of moving around, a lot of sensory kind of things happening as we're reading aloud. Now, is there any kind of... Um actually scientific research for all of this, or is this something that you, you just believe in? No, it's actually evidence-based. So your your wife is actually one of the experts of all things literacy within the last 20 plus are you years. Trying to, are you trying to sort of like, uh, to are you trying to sort of butter, yeah. butter up the boss yes, or something? Exactly, exactly. That's always <laughs> or one my of the hope. Founders or something. <laughs> That's okay. always my hope. But not, you know, go beyond the butter. Right, right. I mean, is there really uh, yeah. scientific? Absolutely. I mean, the evidence shows that the sooner and more exposed children are to reading and the more words that they are acclimated to at a young age really sets them apart um, from their more affluent fear, um, peers. So. Uh, if you're growing up in a wealthier community, oftentimes there's more resources for those children, maybe more uh, extracurricular activities that encourage reading, different kinds of programs, rigor. Um, and so we want to provide those kinds of opportunities equally to our kids growing up in lower income communities so that they can have that same advantage. Well, right. That's so, so there is research that shows that certain areas of uh, community, uh, certain communities in Hawaii right may not be doing as well in school, right. and it's connected to the fact that they're, they were not read to when they were young. So what, what, we, what you're saying, though, I mean, that, that was a nice way to say that there seems to be a generational mm -hmm. effect with uh, non-performance educationally, that, right. that people who may not have done well themselves, you know, pass that status, I guess, right, on to right. their children. And it's not because of, I, I agree with everything you said, and it's not because of will or lack of will. I think that every parent and every educator really wants what's best for children. 
It's just a matter of how do I do that? How do I equip myself with those tools and resources to actually make that gain and help my child? So that's where we come in. We offer programs to parents and educators that provide them with that development so that they can go home and feel more, or in the classroom, and they can feel more confident and be able to help kids, their own children or students who are struggling. Okay, so how does Kara get to be executive director of read to me International? Ah. So now that we got your mission, right. how did you end up uh, carrying the ball, so to speak? Yeah, that's an interesting one, and I'll, I'll try to shorten it down to kind of just what I think is the essence of why I'm here. And um, it's basically, I grew up on the island of Maui, born and raised there, oh, um, went through the public school system. And uh, from an early age, I remember not performing well in school. Uh, really? I, yeah, I just, I just didn't like school. I just... <laughs> I, I remember... Were well, you um, one of those smart kids that were bored in school kind I, of people, I wouldn't or? say smart even. I just, I, I didn't try. I wasn't interested. I didn't know what my, my capability was, I guess, to be short about it. Um, and I remember just not doing well. Oh, really? And um, I remember getting, um, I guess, failing grades on my report cards. Really? Uh, what happened quarter. when you got a failing grade and well, you went home and I your would, parents I, saw that? I would that. go home and, you know, be really nervous about it and tell my mom and dad, you know, here's a report card and just struggle to tell them that I, that I wasn't doing so well. Um, and, you know, they would, they would try to figure out with me what, what's happening. You know, what is it that we can do to support her? And I don't think anyone really had the answer until I got into the second grade where a teacher pulled me aside one day and she said, you know, I, I think that we need to try something else. And what she did was she gave me this, um, this book set. It was the Chronicles of Narnia. I don't know. Have wow, you heard of that Chronicles before? Chronicles of Narnia. Yeah, the, right, right. the I, I, Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe is the first right. book. I saw the movies. Oh, you saw the movies. <laughs> did you read the books? No. No, okay. okay <laughs> but well. now I guess I better read right, the books. Right. The books are great. They're you know, fantasy books. And you know, she read the first few pages to me um, of the first book. And she hooked me onto reading that way. And she said, you know, as a gift, I'd like to give you the rest of the set. Now that I've started you off, let's give you the rest of the set to challenge yourself. Right. And I think that was the door for me to enter into this possibility of being more engaged in school. So you, um, in a sense, you, you are a product. I am of a product. The, the, this kind of an approach, which, which reading, Right. Reading to uh, young people, right, or, right. or having young people read, right, exactly. It, yeah, the teacher it, read aloud to me. It captivated my interest, and it spurred on a new type of interest in learning that I had not had before. So um, you became a, a better student. I, I did hope. become, as a result, I did become a better <laughs> student. It took time, and it wasn't without its imperfections. And um, then you go off to college. Yeah, eventually. Uh, where, where did you go to school? I attended uh, the University of Hawaii at Manoa. So you sort of a home, you, you sort of like, when they hired you, they were sort of buying local, I guess. I right? suppose so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, most of my experience has been um, in working definitely in nonprofits and oh. then locally as well. So, uh, and so how do you end up at uh, Read to Me International? Gosh. Well, my background um, and what I studied is education. So, I started out as an educator in a Title I school. Um, and then eventually moved into nonprofit administration, so worked in a different nonprofit fundraising, kind of learning the ins and outs of nonprofit businesses and how they operate. Um, and then eventually went into training, and, and I got a call one day um, from the former executive director who knew my, uh, my values, what I believed in, and she said, I think you'd be a great fit for this. Why don't you go ahead and interview? Well, so fantastic. So how long have you been executive director at? Uh... It's been almost a year. Really? So it's been about 10 months. Can you believe it? Time, <laughs> time flies. Okay, well, we got you here today, and, uh, and we, you got to lay out the foundation of what read to me International is all about. Um, why don't you, uh, what are some of the programs that, that you have? For example, I remember being hauled out by my wife as a sort of her Uber driver uh -huh. and uh, going out to y and mm -hmm. And we went out to uh, the y and library. Mm -hmm. Actually, it was a really fun night. And she, and uh, not only she, but uh, there were a lot of different people mm -hmm. 
that were coming in and actually reading to kids. Is that one of the programs that yeah, you have? It, that's one of the many programs that we do. Um, so we work with schools as well as public libraries to speak at their events, to have readings for kids, activities, crafts. We like to do that so that we're out in the community doing a, as much as we can to support our keiki. Well, I know that today you just came back from one of your programs. I did. And and it's um, and it's a program that you and the, your organization are doing at the women's prison. That's correct, at the, the Women's Community Correctional Center out in Windward. At the Windward, so you actually go in there and now there are no children to read at at the women's correct. prison. So why are you hanging out down there? You're right. You're right. And and that's the part where we talk about parents and the parent coaching aspect. Um, that program is geared towards incarcerated moms and grandmothers who are at the prison. Um, moms and grandmothers? Moms you have... and grandmothers, yes. We have, we have a lot of um, incarcerated parents who want a way to reach out to their child. Whoa. And the program is one of those ways um, because it allows us to, and by us I mean volunteers and staff go. Yeah, I was going to ask you that. So with this, with the prison program and with all these others, uh, is it uh, how? Who does it? I mean, right, right. Well, we have a dedicated team of staff members. We're small but mighty. Uh, we all believe in the mission, and our values are all aligned to really doing what's best for our kids. Um, so we are powered by that, but we also have a cadre of volunteers that okay. help us with different programs, with different events, and they are really wonderful to work with. Some are educators, but some are people that really just want to help and have different yeah, strengths. Yeah, like, like the people at the YNI. Uh Exactly. You know, and uh, I, I have to confess that when I, I sort of am terrified when I, when I drive uh, my wife out to these things Are because, you? yeah, because she has this annoying way of saying, okay, now John, my husband John Wahe will, uh, will read to you. Oh, you know? right. And, and I have to follow her, and she's actually a very good reader. She's excellent. Yeah, and, and, and it's... Uh, you know, it, I feel uh, inadequate. Well, you bring the jokes. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. I'm sure they appreciate that a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah, that and the ice cream, maybe. Oh, oh yeah. No, no, would... no, but I haven't done that yet. I'm just thinking about that's, that's a what great I should incentive. do next time. Do that. Okay, so we're going to talk about the prison program, right? But uh, before we do, I, um, I wanted to ask you um, that... Uh, do you, uh, when you, when you go to the, the women's prison, do you, um, let, let's say, how do you do this? Do you actually have a set group of people that you work with? Is this open to everybody, or, or how does it all work? I mean, Right, so at every round, we have a set cohort of women who come in that sign up for the class. They voluntarily sign up for the class. They're recruited by the education staff there. Um, and they complete 12 weeks with us. 12 weeks? 12 weeks. So you can imagine how much dedication it takes to come into class every week for 12 weeks. And uh, it's a rigorous process because we write and illustrate, we coach and write them, write and illustrate so we, yeah, a children's I was gonna storybook. Ask you, what is it that yeah, they do? Right, right. So the, our volunteers and staff go in. Right. We work with incarcerated parents to both write and illustrate their own children's storybook. What do you mean, their own children's storybook? They start from the very beginning. They What's actually, the name of the program? Hakumo Olelo. Hakumo Olelo. Hakumo Olelo. I, I guess in Hawaiian that means write a story. Yeah, exactly. It means to compose stories or composing stories. And so the name kind of gives it away. It, it's about the incarcerated parents that are in the program having the vision to send the message home. What's the point of their story? What, what kind of message do they want to leave their children with? Well, we're going to come back and talk more about this because I think it's a very exciting, very moving program. But in the meantime, we're going to take a short break. Folks, come back and hear about Aku Mo'olelo, Mo'olelo or writing stories for uh, children. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Aloha. This is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week, Mondays at 3, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world, and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. 
We welcome you to tune in and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there and we have an awesome uh, studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at 3 o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. Aloha. I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. Welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe'e. We have a very special program this afternoon. I am, I have as my guest, Kara Kusonoski, and she is the Executive Director of Read to Me International, as you can see. And by the way, folks, if you have any questions for me or for Kara or for, uh, I don't know, anybody where you just feel like talking story a little bit, Call us at 808-374-2014. We are in the middle of talking about haku mo'o lelo, lelo right. which means uh, writing stories, and it is a program that Read to Me International uh, puts on at the women's prison. Okay, so what do you do? I mean, I mean physically, what, what happens? The women come in, they hear you. You tell them it's great to read to their children and grandchildren, mm -hmm. but it, they're not only reading, they're taught to... Be an author. They're actually taught to write be an a book. Author. Exactly. They're taught to how to write a book, and it's a children's story book. And on top of that, they're taught to how to draw. How to draw? How to draw, exactly. So they illustrate their own book. They do illustrate their own book. Which you can imagine is a big undertaking for 12 weeks. But yeah, I, mean, I mean, but are these, okay, I, I don't want to sound like politically, un, you know, incorrect, but, what, I, I, you know, you, you, are these women that are college educated women? Are, I mean, what's the demographic? I it's mean, mixed. because I know a lot of kids, a lot of people actually, mm -hmm. e uh, adults who have graduated from college. And, and have had extensive training that couldn't sit down and write a book. Right, right. Well, it, it is mixed as far as who we get in each cohort. Some of our um, participants are college educated. Some have not graduated or don't possess a high school diploma. Really? Um, so the, the levels of education vary. But I think that one thing is really clear. Well, one thing is really clear. They're all in prison, one, right? Okay, so. that, that's a commonality they share. <laughs> yes, you're right. That is a prerequisite uh, for the program. But they also share a passion for wanting to send the message home to their child and, or grandchild. Okay. And I think that passion really drives through a lot of the technical aspects of being an author or being an illustrator. Just the, the desire to want to do something good is in all of them. And I think that's important to bring out and mention because that is unlocking the potential of every single participant. So I, I would think that it, it, you know, for for these participants, to, to, uh, again, I, you know, it, I don't want to be again, I, I don't want to be accused of being stereotyping, but it seemed to me that women prisoners might have a special connection the whole idea mm -hmm. of communicating to their children, maybe, that uh, doesn't ordinarily exist, mm -hmm. you know, or we well, don't ordinarily think of. You know, we, we so how is that? I'm trying yeah. to define this passion. That you right, right. And, and we collect a lot of information for our participants so that we know who they are coming in, so we can understand what their needs are, what their self-perceived, I guess, esteem is. And a lot of the participants don't come into the program feeling ready to write, or feeling like they're an expert artist. Most okay. of them, in fact, say, I'm not great at writing, and I sure don't know how to draw. I can't even draw a stick figure, barely. But it's the real desire of, but I'm willing to try. 
And I'm willing to do this because I love the recipient of this book. And I want to show them that I love them. So they are writing really a love letter. Basically, in different forms. Right. In different the forms. The book is really, uh, it seems to you know, be a love letter to somebody. Right. Their children, their grandchildren. Right, right. And it can be a mixture of emotions, right? I think when I read some of the stories, it brings up uh, feelings of love, affection, caring, uh, but also tough times, I think, that, that are acknowledged through some of the books, um, themes. And, uh, like, you know, I'm sorry mommy's in prison or something sure, like that. Sure. I should have known. Is that part of the conversation? It, it is part of the conversation, but it's through a children's storybook lens. So it's not as direct. It's more nuanced. Um, our participants think of very nuanced ways to express that to their children. What, what does that mean, like in, in um, closer to uh, yeah, um, common English? You know? it, it, it could mean something like... Um, a mother maybe being a, a horse, for example, lost in the wilderness, maybe. Okay. And the horse is a metaphor for her. her, exactly. And she's on a search to find, a quest to find her, her calves, maybe, or her you know, little ones, right? And um, she goes through her whole journey, and maybe the story could end with something like she found them, or she remembered them, or, or something. And so, Whoa. you know, children Whoa, are so good. smart. They're able to make the connection. You don't have to say that mommy is a horse. Yeah. Uh, rather, it's, it's really going through that whole story and making it come well, up. There's so many questions popping up in my mind. Now, okay, I come in to see you. Uh, I'm in prison, and I really want to communicate to, with my children. And, uh, and if I had grandkids, I would do that too. But uh, since I they, don't, I, I, you know, know, but I want to communicate to my children. Right. But I don't. I come off, and the first thing I say to you is, I've never written anything in my right. life. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, I remember when I was in school, they they told me to you know do write various things, and I, I just didn't do well. Mm -hmm. So what what's the first thing that you do to end up twelve weeks later with my being able to put together a book? I think first things first, we tell them they can, and we know they can because of past participants who started out from around where they were, performance-wise, right. and saw them at the end of the 12 weeks, and so where they landed. And so we show them, actually, on the first day. We show do you them help samples. them with the story? We do. We, we coach them. So volunteers and staff coach them on their content of their stories. Uh, we offer proofreading, editing, uh, different things, but it's always their story, and it's always their voice. So and you let them know that they can do it, and that's Absolutely. and that works. It does. It does. Um, and I think it's because everyone has that hope inside of them. No matter who you are, I think there, there's always a little flame of hope. Okay. And once someone tells you that you can do it, it ignites over time. I think, and that's similar to my own story that I shared. I, I felt pretty hopeless in school myself. I was already in the second grade, and I wasn't doing well academically. You know, that's that's a few years down the since preschool right. um, and so that's quite a few years to kind of have the reinforced message of I can't do this but someone was able to break that for me and that was you know a teacher and we hope to be the same we hope to be teachers and guides okay so you get in there and you deal with these women and you give and they, they actually produce a book right okay? what happens I mean how does that go how, how does this all end up being in actual communication with, with mm -hmm. somebody mm -hmm. or, or their children or, right. or, or, or whatever. Right. So we uh, work with the state of Hawaii to make sure that the books are sent home to so, I mean, when you say books, I mean, uh, is this like a tablet, a little paper it's tablet? A, it's that a they... professionally bound book. A it's soft an cover. actual book. It's an actual book. It's soft cover, but it's actual book. Where it's bound, you know, seamless on the outside, shiny, glossy pages, you know, with their own illustrations. So it looks like a text. children's book. It looks like a book. And what about the art book. part of it? I mean, how they're drawing and. I, I mean, just like any artist, you can tell that it's it's drawn or there's watercolor. There's different options, um, shading maybe, you know, with a pencil. They all have different styles, but it looks professionally done. So this, it, it's an actual book. It's I mean, an actual I'm impressed, book. but now. Let me, uh, let me ask you, has any of these 
products been uh, actually published? Is there? So they're all actually published. What do you mean all actually published? So we work through a company that publishes them. Uh, so they're actually published authors, the participants that come through. So they have a book that actually exists in the library, a, you know, a library of Congress of sorts, um, oh. where they all have their own ISBN number, um, and they, they have that on file. Um, and so we're able to reproduce books as we get more uh, requests from family members, which we oftentimes do. We make sure that at least one copy is sent home, right. and a copy is given to our participants. But sometimes families will actually ask for more copies, maybe because to they have more grandchildren, or, they want to yeah. show their friends. And so we make sure that they are publishable well, so that we can order them. I mean, if I, if I produced a book, I, I would be really proud of myself. I would love to see this myself. book, yes. And you, know? you have a book in the making, I hope. <laughs> no. Well, tell me, we, we got a few more minutes left. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's all the, you know, the, the, the brick and mortar of what mm -hmm. you're doing. Tell me some stories. What, what happens? I mean, do you actually see miracles occurring as a result of you know, all of them? We, we get a chance to um, host a graduation ceremony for all of the participants that come through. They host a graduation ceremony at the prison where family members um, and guests are invited to come and actually hear um, their family members read the stories now published in this book, in their own book, out loud. So wow. They read their book out loud to, to the audience. To the audience, exactly. So different guests, family uh, members. Do, come that, and do join. you actually like see a change in their relationships with their children in themselves? Yeah. I mean, is there like something? Certainly, um, certainly, the results of the participants' experience tells a lot about the change that it had on them personally. Um, they share a lot of um, experiences along the way with us about how it improves their self-esteem, how they never believed that they could rekindle that relationship with their child, but it did. Um, how well, their children are looking be, forward uh, to reading again. It, it, it actually enhances their, child, their child's uh, right. there's academic impact. performance. As far as the, the social emotional part, there's, oh, it's, wow. noticeable. it's well, noticeable. Well, I, I, I want to thank you for uh, being a part of this very exciting mm -hmm. program. Sure. That's happening right here at the, in Hawaii at the Women's Correctional Facility, mm -hmm. okay. where I can You know, it's amazing to me that you can take someone that never wrote anything really and create a book that is uh, publishable. I mean, it's actually a book. It is at the end of twelve weeks. Well, thank you so much, and thank you for all the work you're doing for uh, these families and for Hawaii. Thank, Thank you, you for having me on the show, John. You're welcome.